Okay, before I import it, the first thing I'm going to do is just save this file so I don't lose it. Um, so I'm just going to call it uh, end one. In Blender, it's always good to save a lot. It does uh, tend to crash on you a lot. So now I'll do this object and export it. Uh, and on the Central website, they recommend using the FBX format, so that's what I'm going to do. Uh, export Autodesk FBX. Um, I always look at these settings. Uh, I remove these three. Uh, it doesn't find need them. I probably want to remove this one, but I haven't yet. I haven't read enough about it to understand. So I'm leaving that in there for now, but I definitely remove these three because we don't need the camera, the lamp, or whatever empty is. Um, so let's go ahead and pick our location. So I'm going to do it a few times, so window, tutorial, and export as FBX. Uh, now, whenever there's an error, you get a red message up here. Uh, I always get them a lot when I was learning. I think it was all because I didn't position the object first, but uh, it seems to work now. So as long as there's no red up here, you're pretty much okay in Blender. So let's hop into Central and see if we can get this working. So I'm going to open up actually the tutorials uh, because we have one that works already called animation, which uh, is a simple just it shows you the guy, they could do, and you can walk around with him. So holding space on moves around. Uh, my goal is to replace him with the windmill. So let's close this down. Uh, first thing we need to do is add a new object. So if I go into my objects, new object. Windmill. Okay, and now I open up my folder. Uh, so, windmill tutorial. I'm just going to drag and drop this into my objects. Uh, there we go. Into my windmill editor. import as object. So I get my windmill. Um, I don't know why it shows up like this. It just does. Um, what I have to do is delete the second material. And the first one I need to tell it where the color is, which is diffuse. The normal, which is normal. And the specular, which is specular. Uh, and also, pump the colors up. I don't know why I have to do this, but I do. Uh, anyone knows a better way, please let me know. So now I have my windmill, uh, but there is no animation, which at first I was baffled on and took me hours of research to figure out, and it's very, very, very simple. Just go back to wherever your file was, and uh, drag it in again, and import it as animation. And then, again, we have default one, which is weird. Move that. Uh, and then that looks like a working animation. It looks really good, actually. I put loop and linear to make it a little cleaner. Uh, you can adjust the speed if you want to, uh, but I like it where it is. Um, but yeah, that looks exactly how I want it to. So that's a great start. So my object is ready to go. <clears throat> so let's go into the code and see what needs to be done there. Um, go here. So right off the bat, the first thing I see is I have a character pointer warrior that is of type object params pointer. So I know I can just replace this with my windmill. So if I go to my new band, let's see windmill, drop that right in there. Now I'm pointing to uh, the windmill instead of the naked dude. So that looks good. Uh, also, as I see here in the create function of scaling it, I'm not sure what's going to do to my windmill. Let's just get rid of that for now. Um, and uh, in this animate function, I, my windmill cannot walk despite me trying to make it walk. So now I can move, move it to our blade spin animation. Uh, that really should be all I have to do to get this to work. Let's go ahead and compile and see what we can get. 
So there's my windmill for a space bar. There it is. Those blades are spinning. That's exactly what I wanted to see. Uh, and it looks really good. So I was going to stop there, uh, but one thing I wanted to do also was be able to control this speed dynamically from within code to go faster or slower based on the wind or whatever I wanted. Uh, I thought I could just change the speed, which is a function of the animation here within code, but you can't do that as far as I can tell. There's no place to adjust the speed. However, I did find a place to adjust the length, which is currently 5 seconds. So my theory was if I made it 10 seconds, it should go half as fast. So let's go ahead and test that and see if that works. So what I did was copy this function uh, and use a different key, this is the T key, uh, and added one function here so the controlled skeleton dot get skeleton animation uh, I'm going to drop it back in there again and then I need to get the length no I actually don't need to do that, I need the animation first the animation is actually stored in the length uh, and then I can get length and from here I can set the length to whatever I want so it's currently 5 seconds, let's make it 10 seconds and scale keyframes, yes let's do that Uh, and because I want to switch between the two speeds, let's do the same function on the spacebar, but put it back to 5 seconds. So what this should do is when I press spacebar, it goes to 5 seconds. When I press T, it goes to 10 seconds. Let's go and see if that works. So spacebar looks the same to me, and T looks half as fast. So that seems to be working just like I wanted it to. So then I can jump between the two, and within code I know I can interpolate between 5 and 10 seconds to get the speeds that I want. Uh, throughout the game so uh, I hope that helped I spent a lot of hours trying to do this I'm really not good at blender so if I did something wrong on that part please correct me let me know help me out uh, it took me way too long to do this but now that I think I understand how it works hopefully my future assets will be a lot faster to get in um, if you have any other questions or comments please leave them at the central forums uh, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this thank you for your time